Ah, Dun Dun Dun. Welcome to Undone 2. Hi, I'm Christian, this is Lazy Devs, and today we are going to do a little Let's Play. This is just a game that came out. Uh, this is a game that just came out. There we go. Uh, a game made by Liquid Dream, Paul Nicholas, uh, with beautiful music from Agruba Music. Uh, Chris Dunley and um, yeah they made a beautiful game here that is in a uh, demake uh, uh, kind of like a remake but with low low lo-fi software <laughs> um, of the classic 1992 real-time strategy doom 2 uh, again it just came out and I love it I love it to pieces and I love it so much I decided I won't go record a video of it and I don't don't care where I will read it I, I just want to record a video of, it, of me playing this and recording a video I did so I ended up playing the whole game playing through the whole game unfortunately it is a bit of a long game so instead of uploading all those videos to my channel I created a handy uh, playlist down in the doobly-doo if you want to check out the whole thing if you want to listen to me talk about the, the game design of uh, real-time strategy games, then this is going to be your jam. The planet Arrakis, known as Dune, a land of sand, home to the spice melange. Uh, the spice controls uh, the empire. Whoever controls Dune controls the spice. Uh, the emperor has proposed a challenge to each of the houses. The house that produces the most spice will control Dune. There are uh, no set territories and no rules of engagement. Vast armies have arrived. Now, three houses fight for control of Dune. The noble Altreides, the insidious Ordos, and the evil Harkonnen. Only one house will prevail. Your battle for Dune begins now. So this is a bit of a cursed, <laughs> cursed menu, because you have like a... You have to pick the, the different houses, but actually <laughs> it's controlled with a mouse and it looks like a <laughs> cursor. You can use the cursor too, but using a mouse feels a bit cursed. Um, so there's different houses you can pick from. Um, they are obviously from the from the Dune books. Although I think I'm not really good on the Dune lore. I only read the first book. Um, I think House Orders was invented for the game. Don't quote me on that. Uh, I, and if you want to correct me, then please go ahead. Um, Altreides is the, are the good guys, Harkonnen are the bad guys, um, <laughs> in a very uh, blue and red kind of fashion. Everybody picks Altreides, so I'm gonna probably pick Harkonnen. Um, Harkonnen are the easiest one, from at least in the original Dune 2. And Altreides are, are um, kind of like middle difficulty, and Ordos are the difficult ones. I am Mentat uh, Randor. With my guidance, you may be able to assist us in conquering this dusty little planet. For your first test, you will become expect expected to produce 1,000 credits and not a granule less. You may earn credits by harvesting spice and will need to build a refinery to convert spice to credits. If any of your foolish enemies attempt to attack your base, you will have, to pl you will have the pleasure of see <laughs> seeing the invincible Harkonnen troops in action. I want to see that. Okay, so this is an RTS, a real RTS. You have buildings, you have units. You click on the units, you click where they're supposed to go and they will go there. Uh, if there's enemies, oh, there's even a sandworm. There, we spawned right at the sandworm. Right, so this is my main building and yeah, there's a, the EOI of this of the original Dune 2 was a mess and it repl replicated that mess perfectly. So. When you click on a building, there's like this button over, like in the upper upper right corner, and that will bring up a menu. Like for example, we want to build a wind trap here, so we're going to build that, and that will create a second button. It's it's, it's a bit weird, um, but something that is also fun here is that we started with 999 uh, spice or credits, and we have to have thousand. So just to make one credit, we go through this entire. <laughs> this entire level I love it it's so good uh, anyway this looks so much like the original game it's just like lower resolutions I love it it's mm, it's so good right so now see now this is finished and I, I can I can place the wind strap that basically will provide our base with energy and if you click on it you see how much energy it produces 100% now we did a little mistake here um, you're supposed to build buildings on uh, on slabs you can build those concrete slabs 
And if you do that, then the building will be... Uh, because now, for example, the building is damaged because I didn't use the slabs. Uh, so and this time I'm going to use the slabs because I want to build a refinery. Uh, but I think right now for... like It, it, it makes... I don't know. To, to me, it didn't really make much difference. I think if you really want to optimize your strategy, then, then that makes more difference. Because you can always repair the building, and that's repairing, sure, that takes longer time. Um, but like building the slabs takes also time, you know. I guess it's more um, credits, uh, credits efficient to, to build the, the slabs. Um, right, so now we have like sentries of uh, Altridis troops um, walking around. By the way, can we appreciate this walking cycle? This beautiful walking cycle, two frame walking cycles. You can see the individual legs of the troops. <laughs> so good. Oh, yeah. See now, the little troops have been turned into craters. Now we can build a refinery. And this is where we're gonna get our spice. So this is a little spice harvester. Oh man, I love the spice harvesters. So good. So these are little little little, little chubby boys who just walk all over this, this spice melange here. That spice melange, the orange stuff. We'll scoop it all up and bring it back into the refinery and that, that gives us money. That's the main economy of this game. This, this is a very simple game. There's just one resource, spice. And it has to flow back in the box. It's so good. Yeah, I love, I love, I used to love RTS, I still love RTSs, I, um, I'm a big fan of them, I, I'm a big fan of them, I want to talk a little bit about RTSs because it's so good, and they're so strange, and I love them because they're so strange, they're not like, like, like other games in many respects. Um, so RTS were very fa popular, and this game made the RTSs very popular, there were other RTSs that came out before. Um, Dune 2, but um, they were kind of like weird games, kind of not really, like they didn't start the genre per se, they were kind of like weird experiments. Dune 2 is the one that started it all. Like after Dune 2 came out, there were a lot of games that came out, uh, out afterwards, and something that's kind of difficult to wrap your head around if you were, if you are one of the younger listeners, is that this was the genre. This was the genre. Everybody, like when, I was, when you were PC gaming and it was 1992, or I guess 1990 later, so a little bit later than 1992, then at some point RTSs, like that were RTS, point click adventures, and maybe some first person shooters. But they were kind of like very new at that point. Not Nothing compared to how first person shooters are right now. And so, yeah, everybody was looking forward to the next RTS release. There were like basically two. Uh, studios, manufacturers uh, that that produced like the like the big rivalry, right? There was uh, Blizzard with uh, Warcraft and and later Starcraft and so forth. But there was also Westwood, which is this, which has started as Dune. Two. They, were, they were the original ones, you know. They started with Dune Two, then later Command and Conquer, you know. And then there was like, oh, what will the other guy bring in? What are the new new? Uh, you know, gameplay mechanics and the cool technology that they bring into the RTS chamber that will launch the next level of RTS, you know, what's the next level of RTS? So good. Alright, so this is um, this is a weird part of Dune 2 that that is, there is like this a sense of like an overarching um, level, where you can, when you, they show you this map and they're like, ooh, what are you going to pick pick next, you know, oh, there's like this territory and you're fighting over these individual elements, but actually it's just a mission select screen, like, this, this is, there's no simulation happening here, it's just like fluff to make you feel as if you are participating in this grand battle, and actually, in the D-Make here, you cannot select, because in a, in an actual Dune 2, you could actually click on different areas that you want to go to, and I think the mission would be always the same, or like, basically the same. House Harkonnen has generously granted you a new opportunity to serve us. We will now allow you to take command in a more dangerous area area and accumulate 2,700 credits. Although the worthless Artredis you may encounter in this region should be eliminated as a matter of a principle. The spice quota is your objective. Oh, so it was like a... Okay, so although... 
Spice quota is more important. Gotcha, fam. Gotcha, fam. Uh, so I think we're gonna do a for a two, uh, a two refinery strategy. Let's let's try that. So now we have a bit more uh, quads. So these are the not quite the most basic unit, but um, th that's kind of like the good thing about Harkonnen, about the House Harkonnen as a as a house, is that they give you better war equipment, and that's why they're a bit easier. Um, because there is also a cheaper type of unit that is called the trike and that has that is faster but not quite as um, as powerful so I'm gonna build the, this thing here uh, I'm gonna build my refinery yeah so as I said um, RTS word with top dog that was the genre that was the genre and then at some point they all went away they were just all and then today it's it's a, a marginal genre like of course there's starcraft obviously and i think i like a lot of the dna of rts a lot of the things that rts did is kind of like the torch is carried by other genres um so it's not like the games don't exist but it's just like not the driving force behind uh, PC gaming the way it was before. Uh, so it's fascinating to watch like the, the the rise and fall of that genre and kind of like understand why that happened. But I'd really just like also to just understand why, what people found so good about RTS is interesting like to understand what the appeals of RTS. Uh, and I mean you can even see it here even though the, like the controls are horrible here um, compared to the uh, RTS that came uh, after it. One thing that Paul copied here so perfectly is the fact that you cannot select multiple units at the same time. <laughs> when you give order to a unit, you have to click on every single unit individually. And Paul could have implemented the selection box, you know, like in later RTSs. But that's not what Dune 2 was. Dune 2 was clicking on every unit individually. That was, <laughs> it was the first RTS, okay? They didn't think about, about, about these kinds of UI details. All right, um, I want to build a second refinery, please. And I think I might need more electricity, I'm not sure. So that was that was something that that's fascinating that that they they forced you through this UI inconvenience, and you think like okay wow they were really stupid about like why did they why didn't, why didn't you think of this? But the thing is like with the RTS as a genre it's always a negotiation. So there's it's always like in between two universes of on the one hand I want to automate everything I want everything to just work automatically, but if you completely follow this idea then there's gonna be nothing for you to do almost as a, as a, as a player, right? So you want to have the, the other thinking of, I want to have like the micromanagement part. I want to be able to go in there and, and say this unit, I want to go there, you know? I want to be, I want to be involved in the process. I don't want to just everything to go work automatically. And, and a lot of the games and like the entire genre lives in this uneasy balance between those two extremes about, Ha wanting to to everything just work and you sit back and sip a coffee I don't have a coffee here. Uh, but you know just like <laughs> setting everything up and just enjoying the fruits of your labor uh, or you know being like the micromanaging boss and and getting like advantages with like little tweaks and and, and, and things and it's yeah and it, <laughs> it's great it's it's so good it's like you want to do both and and the RTS genre is about giving you both, <laughs> but but it has to navigate like this uneasy, this thin red line. So, for example, the uh, harvesters they just spawn and just go on their way and just automatically start harvest, and I don't have to deal with them. This could, game could be about you know like the harvest when it's finished. It's like I don't know what to do now. <laughs> what I was supposed to wood the spikes, and you have to tell it where to go, you know. And sometimes you have to micromanage the harvesters. Um, but also like incredibly fun to just watch them just walk, you know, just collect all, like, like scoop up all the stuff, come back and give you all of the money. Hmm. Right, let's get some, uh, let's get some, 
I'll trade these scam. Oh, this is interesting. This is the spice bloom, right? I think in the previous, I don't know. In the previous games, I always felt like you, uh, you're, you would l lose units when when you walk into this, but now it's just explodes. I'm not sure. Oh, there we go. You know, I'm just gonna go away. The AI in this in this game, in this version of the game, is kind of very aggressive. Once you uncover them, once they know where you are. They will, you see, they will start attacking you relentlessly. Like suddenly all of the units from the map uh, start attacking me because I saw one unit. So the first two missions are, um, I don't know if I said it before because I had to restart the recording multiple times, um, but the first two missions are um, about collecting spice, but later on we're gonna have to destroy a base. So the first two missions are basically like, you know, tutorial, just like teaching you the basic economy of the game, even though it's so easy. And then later on, again, you will have to, you have to do more complicated. And by the way, like, ugh, Gruber Music did such a good job with the, with adapting the original music. It sounds like the original music, and this track in specific is, is very catchy. <laughs> So for example, here is another automation thing that I think wasn't quite there in the original game, where your units are very... Like, if they see an enemy approaching, they will start firing automatically. And I'm not sure if that was an original unit. There was, I think they behave slightly different to when they spot an enemy. I think in the original game it was they would just stand there but don't move. But here now, if they spot an enemy, they actually will start moving towards that enemy. That's the difference, I think. Ah, so this is one of the uh, units that we haven't seen yet. That's the trike. It's more of a fast unit, but it is uh, less... Uh, the armor is worse. And yeah, something that's also very authentic, but... Uh, not the way you would design RTS these days. The units have, are super spongy. They don't... They make very little damage, especially these early units, and so. But they still have a lot of health, so they just survive. They're just like it, it, they have these endless battles, and you so you have all the time in the world to react to things. It's it's kind of funny almost. Which also means you can just drive past all of the defenses. They kind of like don't matter. You just can drive past and go wherever you want to go. <laughs> At least in the in the in the first um, in the first levels. Uh, oh oh. Uh, my refinery is getting barked. I should have built. See, I should have built on a on the slabs. Okay, build that too. We have to invest into in, into infrastructure, I guess. Oh, there's a look. There's an enemy down here, and he doesn't do anything. You have to say, there's there's some things in this game that don't don't quite work uh, well, and I think Paul made a list on on his itch.io page about the things that he wants to improve or he would love to improve. But you have to understand, Paul was working on this for three years, and all of the game's logic is in a single card. Uh, and you know, this game got like the, there's there's more things later coming up. This is just like the basic units, so. Like this man has been optimizing this game's this game for tokens for three years now, and it's it, like there is no room whatsoever in that card. And so I like whatever request you have for features, like it's it's gonna go on the list, you know. <laughs> and then until maybe some I don't know some upgrade releases more tokens. Oh look, there's an enemy just spawned there, cheating. Have you seen this? They're cheating. Oh man, there's there's an, an infantry walking there. Okay, we don't have to repair the refinery quite as much. Because at the end of the day, you know, this this level's goal is to uh, get spice, right? So we're not gonna we're not gonna spend too much money to into infrastructure. Oh man, so many, so many people are attacking me. Uh, 
So for example, little detail, when you attack a, um, a unit, a uh, driving unit, it will blink, but if you attack the infantry, it doesn't blink. And I ask him about that, uh, Paul, about that, and it's, it's on the list, but there's just no tokens. I mean, something that probably will eventually come is, possibly, is uh, like a uh, Picotron version, maybe, that will have all those things fixed. That's, that's, the, that's the promise of, of uh, Pico 8 right now, that, that Picotron will come out, and then all of the games that, are, that don't have the tokens uh, to add some vital features will then be like come, go to paradise <laughs> go to the Picotron paradise where um, token limits don't exist oh man this guy's shooting at my base A relentless attack by the Alt Altridis I'm trying to focus fire because that's kind of like the, the thing that you do in, in RTS, right? Focus fire. That's how you win. But my buggies are not good doing very... Oh, 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 I, I didn't want to move them around. Oh. oh man, one of my bugg buggies died. Come on. Okay. Right. Yeah. Dune, man. So, um, something that is also interesting about Dune 2 in specific is that, uh, well, first of all, I mean, it's, there's Dune, there's Dune 2, so what's about Dune 1? There's a, that's a whole story, let's not go there. Uh, see, I spawned again. Um, but also, it's interesting as a Dune adaptation because it's kind of like its own adaptation and like it exists kind of independently of the movie. That the original movie that came out, the one by what's his face again, the one the guy who made Twin Peaks. Uh, anyway, like th that that super weird one is um, oh ah that's why it's not progressing. Oh, I have to build the oh I forgot I have to build the silo. Um, the original version of of that uh, the original film adaptation it, it there is some features of it that kind of like reminiscent of the original adapta movie adaptation but it's not specifically not that right it's like the for example the harvests are looking very different like all of the buildings are have like have their own iconic uh, the own iconic look and they're kind of like Especially for the wind traps, for example, they I feel like they are um, they are their own Dune adaptation, right? There's this, some this, they have the look and feel that um, that stand on stands on its own, and I think that's um, something that's incredibly appealing about 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 Dune too. Uh, also, like I feel like the the story is also different, like. I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not. Again, I'm not a big Dune, uh, uh, you know, fan or, or uh, aficionado. I'm, I, don't, I don't know the the stories in the later books, um, but like especially the one in the first book, and then though that's the one that was adapted so far, was like, you know, the Altridis are there and they're attacked by Harkonnen, and and here the story is like it's it's supposed to be like this contest so i don't know if that's something that came before the book or after the book or if that's something that was just like reinvented so to make the uh to make this kind of like conflict of multiple armies work right i made a huge mistake here. i mean this might have cost me the mission even though this is the second mission already already screwing up christian already screwing up Luckily, the enemies are not really keen at attacking my uh, my units, so this might have worked out. <laughs> I love how everything is like burning. Okay, this might be the last spice delivery, and we might be good. Yeah. Okay, all of this was just <clears throat> all of this was just uh, uh, you know like a. 
preparation tutorial. Now the real Dune begins. Harkonnen spread out, spread out strong forces. Atreides went after Ordos. Ordos stole even more land. The despised orders are well established in this region and are harvesting spies that should rightfully belong to House Harkonnen. Destroy the orders installations in this area and assert control in the name of House Harkonnen. Alright, so what we have? Bunch of quads. And this. Okay, gotcha fam, gotcha fam. Okay, now I'm gonna play for reals now. I'm gonna play the slabs. Did, now we're gonna be. This is the first real mission, I feel. Everything up until now was just like baby. Baby's first RTS. Now, baby has all grown up and is going to kindergarten. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna. Claim this little patch of of spice. So one aspect of uh, again, like there's so, so much to RTS, and one aspect like of RTS is that you are that you have control a lot at the same time. You don't don't uh, because in a lot of games you're just controlling a single thing, like a you know. Uh, Dungeon crawler, right? You have like you are one guy or one person walking through a dungeon. Maybe it's a it's a team of people, but there's still you know one unit basically. Um, and so like the area of strategy games is usually where you get to control a large amount of things. Uh, and in RTS in particular, there is like this sense of scale that is, I think, is very important. That you have like this, you have this organization, right? You, there's, it's just not just like something small, but you have like uh, this organization, this, this, this outpost. There's buildings, multiple buildings, with their own, with their own function. You know, there's some, there's kind of like this bustling activity happening. And you're, you know, looking from <laughs> from the sky, <laughs> looking down on them. It's like, yes, that's good, that's good. Get me all the spice right now, please. And you there, move along there, and you move there. You know, like giving the commands and being like, like it's like this power fantasy, like many games are. Um, but like this, it's, it's like this very direct and very powerful vision of the power fantasy that is not necessary about violence but more about control that I found very appealing and it's, it's so funny that you're removed from it as well like there's later on there were RTSs where you could like beam yourself on the battlefield and then look you know from the perspective of a soldier that never worked that was just so wrong because you want to be looking from above on it, right? You want to have the distance, you want to see everything, you know? And you want to see how big your your empire is. Um, that's part of the of the appeal of the RTS. And I think that's it's so funny that it works even like in this low resolution. That kind of makes it even better to some extent because everything is like so teeny tiny and cute and oh! That's, that's also another aspect that... Uh, oh no, we have to build... Uh, let's build another one. Oh, I didn't do the slabs now. Oh, whatever. That um, it's not just... Um, there is a word in German that quite often was used when describing like um, German RTS, especially German RTSs. Um, German RTSs, if you never heard about German RTSs, you should get into German RTSs. Um, they can actually become a bit more popular these days, and because Steam on Steam they have like their own little uh, audience that are incredibly po popular, but never like discussed widely, and because you know they're very European focused. Um, German RTS are things like um, uh, the Anno series and the uh, the Settler series, uh, and they were big. They were really good. They they're very much focused on the base building aspect and and with a minimal or almost no existent military aspect. 
So you were just building a whole bunch of buildings. So it's more like SimCity, but it had like this, I don't know, it was different than SimCity. You weren't building a city, you were building, you know, the buildings had very specific functions. It, you weren't simulating a town. You, you are building uh, like a little clockwork kind of uh, system. And they had like uh, the, um, new, the, the, what I am, the journalist, the, the game magazine said like this this word which I, I really love, which is in German called Wuselfaktor, uh, which is, is kind of like a nonsense word, like kind of like a slang, I guess. No, no, like a... Anyway, it's not really slang. It's um, like I tried to translate this, and uh, the best translation I get like like bustle around factor. Like an X factor, but not X, but like the, the idea that something is bustling around and, and and that contributes to your enjoyment of the of the game. Like seeing something small moving around and like multiple small things like crawling on the screen and being really cute. Uh, that is important for the enjoyment of the of the RTS. Certainly for the German ones. And I love that idea. Um, I love that word. Um, it, I think it nails a certain fascination about video games in general, and specifically RTSs, that you generally don't hear discussed more often, that these, are, these things are cute as heck. And it's such a, such a contrast to you know, the idea that this is a power fantasy, you know? Like, you're, these things are supposed to be cute and fun and, and like, oh, you know, you'd be like, like, oh, man, I have like, my little quads. They're not supposed to be like, you know, manly quads. <laughs> but it's supposed to be like, <laughs> uh, So that's why, for example, like a lot of things that get turned into, into RTSs, kind of like uh, the, the field changes. Like, let me think about this. So I have to build this because this is how we get the vehicles. So so there was an RTS um, based on the Halo franchise, which I thought was amazing. <laughs> because Halo is like the the manly, you know, like, mm, Master Chief, mm, military, mm, we're so important. <laughs> and then there it gets like into tiny little things that are crawling across the map. <laughs> Uh, one game that is also it's not real time strategy, but also that nails that that idea is Advance Wars, right? Where where all the units are super cute and tiny, and and that that changes so much about about the look and feel, like about how you think about this game. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm overthinking things, but yeah, I think I think the fact that everything is very cute in this game makes a big deal. See, I'm so bad about building the slabs. I would love to be able to upgrade this so I can build four slabs at the same time. But in the, so in the original game, you could upgrade your building, and then that gives you access to more things. But I'm not sure if that's possible in this version of the game. I'm just gonna build some more places for things to go. Building the slabs in this version of the game uh, is a lot a lot faster than it was in the original. All right, um, so you cannot build new item, uh, new units, I think, while it's repairing. So you have to decide whether you want uh, to use the building or you want to repair it. I'm gonna build a radar outpost because that gives us some sight on, because right now the map is all, all black. But then we can explore the map a little bit. So anyway, yeah, because of the bustle around factor, of, about the, because everything has to be looking cute, I think um, this version of the of Dune 2 is actually really effective, uh, and that's generally a huge achievement that Paul did here. That this is such an incredibly playable game, uh, in many ways better than the original, almost I would say. I actually did play the original a little bit, just to, like remind myself what the original was. And yeah, like this is this is awesome. See, now I have too little energy. I have to build more energy. Because the radar needs energy. It 
was also interesting, um, Paul also posted a link of somebody speedrunning this game, the original Dune 2 game, uh, who is very knowledgeable in the game mechanics. And it was also such an interesting thing to watch somebody who is so familiar with the game, who knows every nook and cranny of that game, and seeing how they react to the demake. It was so good, like he, he had such, such good insights and observation like he picked immediately on the little details that i would never realize myself it was so good definitely was something i would prefer uh, recommend watching so there's a trike uh trike is very cheap but it costs like it's it's very lightly armored and then there's quad which is a bit more expensive but i would always go with the quad so i would the, the trikes are very fast but i think in this version specifically also the the quads are also quite fast so, uh, I don't know, I don't see the big difference and I feel like the quad is always a better investment. So this is the titular worm from, uh, I guess not the titular, but yeah, definitely. Ah, the worm ate my quad. <laughs> oh no, no, oh crap. I just wanted to say how the worm in this version of the game is less, less aggressive, but <laughs> I guess I take it back. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you have to keep your units on the on the on the on the solid ground, otherwise you get eaten by the worm. By the way, something that actually came up in the book. Um, I actually played the game before I read the book, and it was it was really fun to see uh, that part in the book where they suddenly say like, "Hey, yeah, you have to you have to stay on the <laughs> on the solid ground, otherwise the worm will get you." It's so good. That's, by the way, an exact quote of the, how it was written in the book. Stay on the ground or the worm will get you, boy! <laughs> uh, okay, so let us start exploring things. I'm really good at getting the, uh, the spice up. I have two refineries happening. Oh, let me park the unit and let me build the refinery. Uh, so this is a refinery, right? Okay, let's build this here. And I'm gonna build another... Well, actually, I'm also building... Uh, I'm gonna build the trooper facility, but I'm not going probably not gonna build any troopers. Because the troopers are not as effective in this version of the game. They're very slow and very lightly armored and they just don't do nothing. Uh, in the original version of the game, Dune 2, uh, the infantry who could take over buildings and that made it very valuable uh, when taking over bases. Uh, they could uh, cause a lot of harm. Uh, but, oh, let's see. Let's get this guy's attention. Can you? Yeah, there we go. Let me, let me send him to here, just like explore the map. Meanwhile, I will build this facility and I'm gonna build some more slabs. Uh, let us make sure that we're not gonna... Not gonna... I want to create like little road through here because I want to build even more buildings now. I'm gonna build another. So here, I, I'm just gonna do it, just, just so I can do it once. Here you can build the troops, uh, and there's just heavy troopers, it costs 200. So that's like what? No, the, the quad costs uh, 300, right? Okay, so this is the... This is my quad. Hey, quad! It's not going. I think we need to find a base, the base of the of the bad guys, and then I'm gonna send everything we got there. And that's basically gonna be every strategy from now on. <laughs> Just find a base and attack everything there. And there we go. So see, now we have everything there. I'm gonna send everything down to this little penis, this little not penisia, this little island here. I'm gonna build more things, and I'm gonna send all of the things to the enemy. The only problem is that you have to send each vehicle individually and you um, in the original you could use the map as a target you just click on the map and you could sit, send things uh, through the map and uh, the D make you cannot do that you have to click on it and that will refocus the camera so you have to kind of like it adds additional clicks to the whole process makes it a bit cumbersome uh, let us 
was fire on the on the uh, uh, on the right things. Uh, otherwise, otherwise everything is peachy. Uh, build the quads. Put the quads where they belong. Uh, let's build some troopers or whatever. Just like spending the spice on something other than. Apparently this mission is kind of like difficult and uh, weirdly difficult. Uh, and one of the reasons why is that it uh, you don't have like your units are very low powered, so it takes a long time to destroy a base like that. Oh wait, they have rockets, so maybe they're not that bad after all. Here. Maybe you can keep the units busy and meanwhile they will. Oh, oh what, what? Can you go there, please? Can you can you please go there? Thanks. Let's let's take out the infantry. Uh, let's come back. Um, the my units will f start following enemy units if the enemy units flee, and that can sometimes be really annoying. Can we fo focus fire on this guy who is already burning? Why is this guy fleeing? Oh my gosh, why do they flee? They shouldn't be fleeing. Fight to the end, come on, cowards. Except when it's my unit and I want it to be the bravest unit ever. Oh my gosh, I forgot about building more units. See, that's the only, that's, that's also another problem with, with RTSs. Uh, one major strategy or one major challenge like what is the the skill that is being tested in those games right it's, it's one of uh, one valid question i think like what what are we testing here uh for example in um in a jump run you will maybe test you know dexterity in using the the controls you learn the controls and you press the buttons at the right time uh the right buttons at the right time um in a puzzle game it's going to be you know puzzle solving kind of things in a I don't know, text adventure uh, or like a you know, visual novel, it's going to be um, uh, text. Maybe to understand text, to read and, un and understand text. Um, but what is the threat? What is the skill being tested here? And that's it's not an easy answer. <laughs> There's no easy answer to that question because um, it's, it's 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 a lot of clicking, actually. <laughs> it's clicking a lot of the times. It's just being able to operate this UI is the, is the thing that's, that's often that's the, the thing that's being tested. Um, and also like being able to um, focus your attention to different things because you are being bombarded by like this influx of, um, of data and of information and you have to keep your uh, you know your eyes on the prize so to speak. You have to be uh, understand what is the important thing that I should be focusing on right now and, and not get distracted by looking at the pretty battles. Ah, oh, there we go. That's a, t the screen shake that is, I think, only there in this version of Dune 2. And that is indeed... Our building was destroyed. I'm gonna get my guys up in here. And I'm gonna start attacking the main building. Ah, oh, man, sometimes they just want to drive somewhere else when they do that. Pathfinding is a little bit weird, but you know, I'm not gonna like it's 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 fine. Pathfinding is always has been a problem in RTSs. There's not an RTS in this world where people say like, eh, I have no problems with the pathfinding whatsoever. <laughs> you know, because like it works 90% of the, 99% of the time, and then one time you wanted to do something and it doesn't do that, and it's like no. Yeah, there we go. Getting everything blown up. Oh man, I love it. I love the rockets. Such a cool effect. And it's so good. Like the adaptation of this game is so good. It's so incredible because it's like, it's the same enjoyment that you had from the original game. But in, like in this tiny little package, and you would think like, okay, you know, it's a remake, you know, it's a BQ8 game. It's just like not quite, you know, the real deal. But it is the real deal. It is, it is 
like playing Dune by all extent. Like there is no difference that I can pers like okay there's obviously differences but it's like it's no like like it's it's there everything is there and some of the things are actually snappier so for example one thing that is not like an original whereas in original you um, you couldn't like the way you would issue an order is you would click on a unit and there would be a menu of things that you want the unit to do and you have to click on the button and then click on where you want want to go. Or like what you want to attack uh, and then there were like shortcuts that you could also employ um, but uh -huh. and then you would always use the keyboard and, and mouse basically together and I would never do that <laughs> because I was a teenager and I was like no I'm just gonna click on the on the screen and so RTS were not quite as fun un un until they uh, discovered the right clicking as a as a ability to issue contextual orders. Uh, I, I never used uh, shortcuts in RTSs until like uh, StarCraft 2 <laughs> and I played through all of them. No, not all of them, but a lot. Um, so this is really funny. Um, yeah, but yeah, if you play Dune 2 now, like you would probably use A to attack, like the A button to attack and M button to move. Um, but this is Pico 8. And I think Paul wanted it to be playable with a gamepad. So it's just like everything is just a uh, left mouse button. So you select a uh, unit with a left mouse button and you click on something with a left mouse button and it will contextually pick the right uh, verb, so to speak. And that's fine. I'm fine with that. I think that's a... Um, it's not like an original, but it's, it's, a good, it's, it's a fair concession, I think, to the... To the um, Especially if you consider that this is Pico 8, you know. Alright, and that should be it. Mission complete. Yeah. Alright. So this was mission one, two, and three of uh, Dune. I will uh, wrap this video up here and I will maybe publish this as an individual video. On, I'm not sure how I will publish but I will do a cut here. <laughs> uh, so this is gonna be the moment where I will direct you to my coffee if you wanna support my work. Um, that's really great. And also, like, you should definitely get this game. You should support um, uh, support Paul, Liquid Dream. I, this is an excellent game. This is this is, has been already like it's just January. It has been such a strong year for Pico Eight. Like already, I have like a list of like um, game of the year contenders for Pico Eight, and there's already that's the third entry, and it's just January. <laughs> so. So yeah, this is great. I will continue playing this. I'm, I'm having a blast with this game. This is so good. Uh, yeah, see you next time, guys. Bye-bye.